Today we're headed down to a buddy of mine's sawmill. He runs an LT35. He does a lot of portable work. He also builds metal buildings. He's got a pretty good sized log yard at his place. And uh, he's got something I need to build this barn with. Yellow pine. Walking out here to the shop to get my cordless drill. Check out all that ash. That's about a thousand board feet right there to saw and dry four quarter boards. And one of them I'll probably do slabs with. This one right here, I think it's a nine footer. It's got a real nice crotch up here at the top. Should get some good slabs out of that one. And like I said, we'll do four core boards out of the rest of them. Got some equipment that's currently down. The New Holland tractor has a bad radiator. I hate it when machinery's tore up. I hate having something I can't use just taking up space. So hopefully that radiator will come in today or tomorrow. We can get that changed out this weekend. And over here, I should have already had this on the sawmill. I'm actually behind on sawmill and i know that's a shocker to everybody but that is a nice box elder right there it's good and solid in the middle maybe a little spotting going on box elder is out of the maple family so it can spot just a little should get some really nice slabs out of that one it's about 20 i think 26 inches diameter it's a seven footer I'm down here at the new pad. Had a lot of questions on that video about expansion joints. And there is a key way. I didn't show it on the video. I was trying to video everything and keep those guys going and make sure they had everything they needed. But right here in the middle, there is an expansion joint, or they call it a key way down here, right in the middle. And you can see the seam right down through there. So that was one of the many questions I got about that video. Let's move on to some of the other ones. So right here's the back of the pad. And this is some more of the slate that I had brought in. I had clay left over from a swim pool we put in and some slate and some rock brought in here to build up this area. A lot of people were thinking we was pouring that slab on top of just grass and that was not the case. It's been sitting down here, this slate has since springtime and uh, had a little bit of some weeds growing up some grass coming up through which is no big deal it's good solid ground and right back in there to the tree line is more of it so uh, just to answer that question we did not pour this directly right on top of grass this was actually a site that was prepared by me last spring with a bobcat and this concrete does not have rebar and uh, one of the reasons being they use fiber around here we don't have real cold winters and everybody in this world does different things differently based on their climate. And here in Tennessee, it doesn't get that cold in the wintertime. 
and fiber is just as good as rebar if you don't have to deal with frost. So there's fiber mixed into all this concrete as they were making it over the transit mix, which makes it strong, but it didn't go anywhere. There's no, you know, there's no need to think about this it might bust one day or start cracking. You know, fiber's good stuff. I've poured pads of fiber, or had it poured for the past 10 years, and none of them have failed so far. The only thing I don't like about this pad was this low side over here. And uh, that was that was my fault. I'm the one that done the grading down here, brought in the dirt. And this side down here was a little bit lower than the rest of the pad, so it took a little bit more concrete. Had a little bit come out of the forms there at the bottom. So we got kind of like a wall right here on this side. He's got a, he's a, a two by 12 there on the forms. We should have a nice solid concrete wall when I take that form off here in just a few minutes. It should look pretty good. But what I'll have to do is, is come in here and either pour a ramp or bring a retainer wall out and bring some gravel in here and have some kind of way of driving up into the barn once we get it built. The sides will be fine. I can drive right into the sides. They're level with the ground right over there. But this front will need some kind of ramp. But it turned out being a good pour and there was no issues. This is two days later. It's set up really good. It's nice and solid. The forms held up really good on all sides, especially that side over there where it's a lot higher. So we should be in good shape here. I'll get the drill. We'll take off these forms. See how it looks. And also on this pine we picked up yesterday from Matt, I got a 12 footer, a 14 footer, and this big one right here is a 16 footer. These will be tie beams right here for the barn, and this will be another post right here. So we should get some good uh, beams out of these. This is yellow pine, it's not been down too long. That first one out there is a big one now. It's a good size log. We'll get a nice tie beam out of it. A good eight by eight post out of that middle and another tie beam over here. And the tie beams are gonna be eight by tens. Eight by tens on those and all the posts will be eight by eights. I got most of the forms off. Harry, the guy that put the concrete down is coming by here sometime today to pick up all his boards. And he's got a little post puller so he'll get those loose and get that two by 12 off the front. And we'll be good to go here. 